Why does it look like it's it's straight, right? I'm not crazy. Why doesn't it look see. it's straight, right? Yeah, it's straight. Yeah. straight. Hey guys, so I'm also with Buffalo Green. We're about to have a leg session with my friend. So, aka the bodybuilding banker. Known Emeka for a while. Two years now? Two years, two years. Two years, yeah, crazy, yeah. Crazy. We've done we're on TikTok, we've done yeah. a lot of podcast episodes together. Yeah. Like Emeka said, we met on TikTok, funny enough. You gravitate to people who have the same interests as you and proximity is prosperity. So, Emeka lifted, he works in investment banking, so straight away I knew he had that mindset of always trying to push the envelope, always trying to grow. Since then, like you said, we've connected, done a ton of YouTube content. Yeah. I've he learned from him. He competed as well last year. Yeah. How did that go? That was good. I placed top four. He looked in crazy. Stacked, yeah, yeah, in a stacked men physique competition in the UK, the FBA, so that's the Drum Free Bodybuilding Association. Learned a ton. I didn't know. I probably got into the best shape of my life and I got into the weight that I hadn't been for 10 years, even though I've been training consistently. So I definitely say competing is a game changer. It just pushes you to see what you can achieve at your natural limit. If you were to compete again, what would you do different? I think I'll give myself a longer period for sure. I gave myself 16 weeks, but given that it was my first time and I was working on a few deals, at times I would break my diet. And the thing is no one sees, but on stage, everyone sees, right? Yeah. You can't cheat the process. And the cutting period gets a lot more challenging the further you are from your goal. So 100%. to avoid yeah. a stressful prep, I would probably do 20 weeks or even 22 weeks. And I'd cut slow, right? Because I want to hold as much muscle and I want to be able to function because when your food is low and your energy is low, it requires a lot more discipline to carry out your daily activities such as work, for example, in business. Yeah, I'll say, for, I'll say for me, it was definitely give yourself more time and yeah. cut a lot slower, but way too aggressive with my cut. And just because my starting point wasn't the best, so I actually say the main takeaway is have a good starting point. 100%. If you have a very lean-ish starting point, to drop 15 kilos, 10 kilos is literally like nothing. Yeah. But if you have to drop like 30, then it becomes more of a challenge. And I'll say for me as well, it's just making sure when I pick a date, I don't try and keep on moving it. Yeah, I did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that. I'd, I'd probably postpone my show three times because I wasn't ready, right? I wasn't committed to the process. One of the reasons why I am not competing this year is because I have other goals and competing, you have to give 100%. And I think when it got difficult, when I was very hungry, I would give in to my cravings because I wasn't able to dedicate 100% of time into it. So with competing, just know you're going to sacrifice because you can't cheat the stage. When you get on stage and you're compared to the other athletes, you want to know that you put your best foot forward. Um, switching gears, because obviously Solomon's a banker as well. Um, he's worked in different, like the biggest banks you can think about. So. Obviously, summer internships are coming up. What would be your advice for anyone that's trying to convert their summer internship into like a full-time role? What would you tell them that? These are the two things you need to focus on and this will enable you to convert that internship. Okay, two things I would focus on. The first thing is networking. Your network is your network. The way decisions are made is they compile in a room and they decide on the candidates. There's different metrics they have. It's usually on your performance and how much you learn. So what was your starting period compared to the ending period? But there's favoritism. If your name has a positive sentiment around it, if people think of you when they think of good things, they're likely to advocate, especially when it comes to a period where the banks are cost-cutting they might pick someone that they like, right? Yeah. I spend time with a mecca because I like him as a person, so I'm willing to sacrifice yeah, my time. 100%. The same way that they make decisions when it comes to giving offers. So make sure that you're learning something every day. You're not awarded on how much you know, yeah. but your potential for growth. Because you can be someone who has all the experience, but within a 10 week period, you haven't grown. Yeah. Whereas you might be someone who doesn't have the strongest fundamental base, but your ceiling is a lot much higher than someone who has a much more fundamentally sound base. So always be curious, ask questions, make sure you're reviewing your notes and try not to make the same mistakes. If you can make your senior, your analyst, your associate jobs easier, your vice president, 
they want to give work to you because everyone is trying to impress someone at the higher point of the chain. Yeah. So if I am an associate, I want to impress my VP because the next step is to be a vice president. If I'm a vice president, I want to impress my managing director. So the more you can take off the plate of the people who are high up the food chain than you, the more they're going to trust you going forward. I think my biggest tip would be hit the ground running straight away. Sure. Obviously, your internship is eight weeks. People think they have a lot of time, but you really don't. First impressions matter. Mm -hmm. People are going to remember the first five weeks, 100%. not the last three weeks. Yeah. If you hit the ground running straight away and you gain that good light that someone said straight away, mm -hmm. people are going to remember that and favor you towards the end because okay. also it's eight weeks, your first time working, yeah. your performance will decline. Yeah. So 100%, the last three weeks will not be your best showing. Yeah. What will be your best showing is the first four weeks. So yeah. you come in asking questions, you're showing people that you have the potential to develop and learn. That goes a long way. Yeah, for sure. I think a lot of people think if they are bad the first four weeks, they can recover. More times than not, you can't recover because you're in a switch team. So you switch from being in ECM to DCM, completely different people. And those guys in your new team will talk to your old team and they already have a preconceived notion about your own. Oh, he's not that good, he's lazy. So already your new team is already expecting you to be down here. Exactly. Now you have to overcompensate so much just to get a good light. So I'll say hit the ground running straight away. Yeah, just to echo your sentiment, build trust. You see, once you build trust, I'm going to be willing to give you more responsibility and more work. Yeah. And you have a greater opportunity to show your potential. But if I give you a simple task and you make a mistake, it's not going to incentivize me to give you more work. 100%. And therefore your potential is stalled. So I would definitely say build trust. Another practical tip I would say is try and live close to the office. That was a mistake I made in one of my internships because I wanted to save money. But you need to think long term. It's not yeah. about the 10,000 pounds you make over 10 weeks. It's about the potentially hundreds of thousands you can make in a few years. If you convert that internship. If you convert, right? Yeah. Because it's not just about those 10 weeks, it's about launching yourself a career. And especially if you're on your penultimate year, if you can get the offer, it's so much easier when you go back to uni. You don't have to stress, and you're in a position of strength. Yeah. I've been in, I did a four year course, so I've been on both sides of the coin. I've not converted my internship, and I felt the stress. And then the following year, because I had an extra year, I converted my internship. And the good thing about converting your internship, you go from a position of strength. So I was able to only apply to firms that were better than the yeah. current firm I had. And I was deemed as a stronger candidate because I had an offer in place. Yeah. And naturally, you're a lot more confident when you're going to the interview. It's, because it's like, it's pre-selection. Yeah. So you've already tell people, uh, for example, Morgan Stanley, having an offer from Goldman Sachs yeah. before the interview. In their mind, number one, they're like, okay, this guy has an offer. He's doing something right. Yeah. So already, you already put in that sort of, it's more like a halo effect. Mm. You already have, like, okay, this guy has to be good already. Let's really talk to him and let's find out more about him. Yeah. But if you're coming in, I'm not saying you have an offer, but definitely having an offer yeah. helps 100%.